What is REM sleep and why is it so special? Maybe we can comment on that, rapid eye movement sleep. Yeah, discovered in the 50s at the University of Chicago, it's intense brain activity, high levels of metabolic activity, dreams in which people report a lot of the theory of mind. We were talking about uh, Simon Baron Cohen. Theory of mind is was actually something that he developed for the diagnosis of aut autism. If you take kids, most kids of age five, six, seven, you put them in front of a TV screen in, in a laboratory and you have them watch a video where a kid is playing with a ball or a doll, and then the kid puts it into a drawer, shuts the drawer and walks away. And another kid comes in and you ask the child who's observing this little movie, you say, uh, what does this second child think? And they, a typical kid would say, uh, they wanna play and they don't know where the ball or doll is, or they, they, they're upset or they're sad, they want the doll. Autistic children tend to say, the doll's in the drawer, mm -hmm. the, the, the toy's in the drawer. They tend to fixate they can't get in on the event, they can't get into the mind of the, they don't have a theory of mind. Dreams in REM have a heavy theory of mind component. People are after me trying to get me. You can assign motive to other people. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid, but it's because there's an expectation. That doesn't tend to happen in slow wave sleep dreams. Now, all this of course is by waking people up and asking them what they were dreaming about, which from a standpoint of a AI guy or yeah. a machine learning guy or a neuroscientist kind of like, eh, but it's the best we've got. Yes. But brain imaging what in waking states while people view a movie and then brain imaging while people are sleeping supports the idea that that's basically what's going on. So REM sleep is amazing and you're not gonna get much of it during your bout with uh, so, Goggins, but you will afterward. Why, so to, to, to comment, why won't I, so is, is it not possible to get into it real quick? only if you're very, very sleep deprived, but because you're going to be at high muscular output, that's going to bias you towards more slow wave sleep overall. And your body and brain are smart. They, it will know, they will know that your main goal is to recover so you can keep going. So you can keep firing neuromuscular contractions and you can keep running so that you can, I mean, it's amazing to think like, why do we ever stop? They, unlike weight training where I can't do a 500 pound deadlift, I just can't. I could train for it, but I certainly can't do a 600 pound deadlift, I can't do that. What causes us to stop an endurance event is usually not a physical barrier, it's almost always a purely mental barrier. And that's a very interesting problem. I mean, neuroscientists don't tend to think about those sorts of problems because it sounds so non-neuroscientific, mm -hmm. but that's fundamentally related to the question of, you know, what is pursuit? Why, what is the, the desire to push and to, and to carry on? Is there a neuroscientific answer to, for that question, you think? I think the closest thing is this um, paper from, uh, from Genalia Farms, the Howard Hughes campus, showing that if you put uh, animals into a simulated environment where you can measure their effort, the forces on while they're running, and you can look at the, and you can control the visual environment, and you can create a scenario where the animal thinks that its output is futile. It thinks, it, it knows it's running and it's actually running, but you change the frequency of the stripes going by in their visual world, such that they think they're not getting anywhere, mm -hmm. and eventually they quit. And the thing that determines whether or not they quit is a threshold level of epinephrine in the brainstem. If you drop that level back down or you, or you give the animals dopamine essentially, they keep going. If you take dopamine down, they, they're like, this isn't worth it. It's helpless. They're just, this isn't worth my time and energy. Well, this is where the difference between humans and non-human animals is interesting because it does feel like humans have an extra level of cognitive ability that, might be relevant here. Well, you can pull from different time references. So if right. you're in that moment, you're gonna need a kit of things to right. pull from. So you can think this is in honor of someone else that passed away. Right. And you will find a gas reserve that's amazing, right? Now, whether or not mice are like, I remember my brother back in the other cage when I was a little mouse, you yeah. know, we don't know, but, it's very likely that they don't do that, that they're so present, they're in the experience of there and then and now that they aren't able to extract from the past and they're not able to, to project into the future, like how great it's gonna feel when I get to the end of this really lame VR corridor. I don't think they think about that. And, and think about like, if I quit now, 
how will that have, what kind of effect will it have on the rest of my life in the future difficult times? Like if you allow yourself to quit in this particular moment, you'll become a quitter more and more in life. And then you're going to not get the the other nice, uh, the opposite sex mammals. <laughs> That's pretty severe. You went there. I don't know. You took don't, it all. You took it the whole way to evolution and back again. I mean, but that's that's really it. I mean, our ability to time reference in the past, present, or future. I do believe that we can be in the present and the past, or the present and the future, or only in the present, or only in the future, or only in the past. But I don't think that we can really think about past, present, and future all at once. And this has a similarity to uh, covert attention. Like we can split our visual attention into two things. We really can duo task, even though we can't multitask so well, or we can bring those two spotlights of attention to the same location. But it's very hard to split our attention in really well into three domains, excuse mm -hmm. me, into three domains. I think that that's very, very challenging. And time, our time referencing scheme tends to be just one or two time references. 